Let's see what happens. Hi, Vaishnavi. Hi. Shashank Kushekar. Okay. Hi. Hi, ma'am. Hi. It's okay to say hi. Relax. Yeah. I'm all yours. Hard part. Yes, ma'am. Actually, uh, today's topic is uh, introduction to NLP. And uh, ma what intrigues me is, ma'am, uh, that we are all heap of memories. And uh, see, our, um, um, you know, this operating system that can be basic for everyone. But uh, we are unique because of our memories. That is what I believe. And what my question is, suppose even if the, some portion of memory is lost, uh, you know, walking, talking, these things are all still there. Even in mentally retarded people, we sh I shouldn't, I don't like to say that, mentally incapacitated people, they are good at, you know, walking, talking and uh, other, that is the basic uh, operating system is fine with them. But what is the uh, problem is with the memories that they have lost or probably memory is disrupted. Uh, so can NLP help uh, uh, people, um, you know, who have lost their memories or who are in, how does it work, ma'am? What a question to start with. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question right now because people okay. do not have an idea of what NLP is and that's the purpose of this talk today. So am I going to start now? I will take up that question later. But yes, uh, are, are we going to start off now as, as of now and then I can uh, uh, answer it as I go on. And yes, if any of you have any question, you can post it in the chat and then we either Bharti or the admin person, Mr. Abhishek, can read out the question. If it is something that I'm talking about and a question pops up about it, I don't read the chat because my concentration will be divided, but you can stop me and ask me this question has come up, okay? The question you have asked is something I'd like to answer later. And uh, the way I work is, um, I function better if I can see some faces. So at least some of you have opened your uh, video and I'm happy about it. So let me introduce you to the world of NLP. Can I have my slides, please? Can you share that screen? Can the admin person hear me? Abhishek, hear me? Bharti, I can't hear you. Ma'am, he's putting up the slides, ma'am. All that he has to do is share screen like he like your other video was showed. Yeah. Okay. Put it in the slideshow mode, please. Slideshow, Mal. It's an option of slideshow. On top, can you see that? And put it from the beginning. Any of you who have heard about, and thank you, thank you. Uh, if, if you ask me, what is NLP to me? I would say it is a way of life. It is not just a theory of personality. It is something that can change and transform our lives so powerfully that we don't even notice it. It is so elegant and simple, and I like to share, share with some of the concepts in that. Can we put the next slide. So what does NLP do? The next slide, yeah. So if you look at the three words, neuro-linguistic programming, okay? Now in this, as you can see, is it all very small letters? I didn't anticipate this. Can you, yeah. If you look at it, the neuro part of it is to get information through our neurological processes of sight, seeing, I mean, sight, smelling, hearing, and tasting and touching, which means like, you know, the input into our system, the neurological processes through the five senses. And then that is the basis. And then the linguistic part is using language to give meaning for our um, unconscious level. So whatever is happening in our brain, that comes out as words. The programming part is the organizing of ideas and actions. It looks very complicated, but actually it is how do we um, 
have concepts in our mind, meaning of our life, an, an opinion about ourselves. What do we think about ourselves? What do we think about our world? All these things come under the way we are looking at the world and the way we look at the world and ourselves influences many things that we do. So where is it useful? So NLP is to understand the neurological network that is already there in our brain because of our earlier experiences and also the language part which when we speak, language is the, is the most intelligent uh, aspect of the human beings which makes us special compared to the other living beings. So the language acquisition is supposed to be the most intelligent act. So then the language, how do we arrive at the language? So when we talk to people, many things can be understood from the way we speak, where we are coming from, where is the impression. So it, uh, in, any, in any of us, like what Bharti asked about memory, we are as good as our memory. So we are also affected by our memory. We are also not remembering many things. So only because you're not able to remember some things, we are sane. And only because we are not able to remember some things, we are upset. So how does that happen? So let us look at that. So where is it useful? First is, it is next please. Click the next. Okay, one more click. Yeah. So it is useful in communication. It is useful in, in the way we express ourselves, in the way we make presentation. How do you collect your ideas cogently and express in a way the other person can understand how do you alter your language to suit the other person's language structure. These are the magical moments of NLP. The second is in sports. I have personally used a lot of sports people excel in their sports activity. So sports, it is extensively used in order to program them for winning and overcoming any failure that they would have had, which will come in the way of their um, performance in the next and the education is for learning. I have used thousands of students using NLP, how we can enjoy studying. People don't enjoy studying. Do you? All of you are students. Do you enjoy studying? I doubt. I, and I ask school students, why do you go to school? And they say, we go so we can meet people and play. Today, playing is also gone. So they don't enjoy schools. It's like they call it pressure cooker. And college, it's to just have fun. College is a place, where is, what is the definition of college? Canteen with some rooms attached. So canteen is a place where the entire college comes alive sometimes and people enjoy each other's company more than the classes. So learning per se hasn't become an enjoyable activity perhaps because over the years it's been packaged very badly. It's very useful for business to do negotiations, to do understand the other person's needs and then package our ideas according to their needs so that it's a mutual win-win and also about negotiation and holding your meetings in a meaningful way. Next please. And then you have um, health. So your well-being, your weight loss, your, you know, any of those issues that we have, even knee joint pain, I have managed with using NLP processes. And the last point is on, one more point please, medical, which is for counseling, psychotherapy, and hypnotherapy. For counselors, it's a very beautiful tool to use to get instant results. I just want to pause here for a minute and I want to share one thing, which is I have extensively used uh, transaction analysis for my personal transformation over the years. And also, but the kind of healing that happened with NLP didn't happen with TA, transaction analysis. Both are powerful tools. With transaction analysis, we'll know exactly why we are blocked, exactly where the fear is coming from. Where is the self-doubt coming from? How can we overcome is also possible in TA, but it's faster in NLP. So next slide, please. So what are the unique features of NLP? One is NLP becomes a way of life. Uh, thank you, Abhishek. You can wait for a minute and then I will say next, then you can click. Okay, can you go back one, one point previous? Yeah, thank you. So it is a way of life. You know, it is amazing how NLP can help us relook at ourselves, relook at issues, relook at our past. So much so that in many things, it just becomes a way of life. Next, please. Yeah, next point. A change in attitude towards being non-judgmental towards oneself and others. You see, we think we judge others or not. No, we judge ourselves also. Sometimes people find it very difficult to forgive themselves or accept that they have done a mistake or you know, come out of a failure feeling, yeah, it happened, but I can go on in life. They don't feel that way. 
So this, it helps us to change our attitude towards ourselves and others, becoming non-judgmental. Third point, please. Mostly content-free, meaning mostly when we go for counseling or help, you know, people ask, what happened? And we have to go through the whole story again. And that itself puts up people from seeking help. But if you ask me in NLP, the most, this is the most unique feature, which is we will say, don't tell me what happened, who is involved, what was the event. Just tell us how is it impacting you today. Next point. So it is very process oriented. How? How did you arrive? How do you know you're upset? How do you know you're happy? How do you know you're confident? How do you know what shall we change in that? So it is every experience that we have had in our life has a structure in our in internal computer. And that structure decides how it impacts us. So some experiences are very strong and they impact us today. And some experiences are so strong that they don't allow us to go forward. But when we change the way the structure is, it changes the way it impacts us. That's the magic in NLP. Next point. Empowering. Because the process, when we do this process, even though the instruction is given by the facilitator or the counselor or the therapist, the one goes through it with consciousness. So I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm changing. And that when we learn in one example, we can replicate on our own. So it's very empowering. You don't have to go to the therapist every time for this. We ourselves can change the way something impacts us on our own. So it becomes very self-directed and empowering. Next point. Leaves the past bad feeling. That's the most important gift. We are sometimes stuck because of our bad feelings that we have from our past. And that doesn't allow us to be happy today. And if we are not happy and productive today, our future is also kind of affected. But when we are able to leave the past bad feelings, maybe as a learning, maybe as a gift, and then we reframe it, it becomes very, very powerful in not impacting us today, not feeling bad today, actually being proud of it. If we look at it, um, the, I would say the greatest gift is to learn to live in the now and whenever anything from the past affects us or anxiety about future affects us, we know how to handle it in the now so we are able to face the situation right from this moment on in a different empowered way. What is also important to realize in NLP is when it began, it didn't have a lot of proof of it. Now with neuroscience, neuroplasticity, and a lot of studies on the brain with the equipments of computer and system driven ones, we have enough proof to show that whatever changes we make in NLP is scientific. And that is where NLP wins hands down compared to many other schools or you know, tools. I'm not saying NLP is the only tool to use for ourselves, but it's one of the easiest elegant, fast tool one can use in order to free ourselves from worries. Because it is not just what uh, upsets about the past, it is about the future also. So because probably, for example, somebody had gone for an interview and they didn't do well, or you've gone for an exam and you didn't do well. And then when you're sitting for the exam, that memory comes and makes a person feel scared. So we are unable to face it. Or they copy paste it to a future exam. Tomorrow is my exam. I didn't write my exam yesterday very well. I don't think I can write my tomorrow's exam very well. It's a worried expression. So we carry our past impressions to our future. And then that is how we become disempowered. We feel lose confidence. We feel we are not worth it. We can't manage it. Let us understand one thing about NLP, which is in anything, not only NLP, in anything, none of us can, nobody can erase any memory. What we can disconnect with NLP is the bad feeling or the tight feeling or the sad feeling or the scared feeling that one might be having regarding what might happen in the future or has happened in the past. So that is where it becomes very empowering. At this point, I want to know if there are any questions anybody has. Ma'am, actually, when I sent the registration form, uh, uh, I got three questions from uh, the audience. Is it, okay. is, it, is it regarding anything I've discussed so far? Yes, ma'am. But uh, yeah, it is about NLP. Pratiksha asks that can NLP be used to assist children with special abilities okay, and now, how it can be used? Many of you are asking about special abilities. I'll answer that as one short of question. 
Okay. okay. What is the second question? Uh, second question is: Can NLP be applied to improve a person's self-concept? Yes. If so, how does it shape an individual self-concept? Yes. And how can we measure its effectiveness? This is from asked by David. Uh, from the output, we can measure. From what you know, we can instantly, for example, somebody thinks that they are not very good in. Uh, give me a. Who uh, Devati asked is it? Devati is there? Yes, ma'am. Devati Sanapla. Yeah, Devati, unmute and ask me. Give me an example of where you think the self-concept should be reflected. Give me an example, a context. NLP is very contextual. Is Revati going to answer? Is Revati there? No, I don't think no. Among the 15 that I see in the list, Revati doesn't seem to be there. Okay, so we'll not take it up now. Revati is there, connecting. So now let me give an example. I don't let her join as she comes. You know, some, somebody says, I'm not a good communicator. I can't express myself confidently. So we have a few processes that can use. I'll be sharing it towards the middle of the presentation. Where you know you can use in them in two three processes to help them correct that because NLP is very context for a particular skill you can easily use. So then what happens when they see there's something called future pacing we use. After we do a process, we see how it will be in future, and then when it comes to that particular event, the person will automatically speak because the neurological network has been changed there. So the output is very different. May I know why there is a gray block in the slide? Is that how all of you are seeing it with the block? That's not good. It's covering the point. What's happening? Okay. Can you put the next slide, please? Yeah. Now, I just want to stop here. This is Richard Bandler on the left side. And then Richard Bandler was... Um, mathematician and a systems analyst and a psychology student along with his classmate or friend Frank Kusulik. They were in the process of um, transcribing the um, one of his friends who are a publisher. He wanted him then to transcribe because they were psychology students. They were asked to transcribe the sessions of Fritz Perls who was then a gestalt um, therapist in the 1960s. For those of you who have never heard that name, Whenever you say Gestalt therapy, the father of Gestalt therapy is Fritz Pulse. So when they got those tapes and they started deciphering at the same time, click please. Yeah, this is Fritz Pulse. One more picture, click. This is Virginia Sakir, who was then a family therapist. So what happened was as they were transcribing at that, at the, at that time, Virginia Sati was also doing tra training for students on family therapy. So she, when she was doing this uh, therapy, Richard Banda was responsible to tape it. He was such, he was such a powerful person that he could, he could sit in the next room and do a videotaping of this and he could listen to the entire session because it's being taped. These two people, they were, they were legends and they were uh, giants of the field. And when he got all the text of these people, he realized that they are the only tool they have to help people is communication. They are not giving medicines, they are not giving anything except talk, talk, talk. How are they able to talk and influence people to change themselves? So this was a curiosity they had and they identified the way they speak has certain language patterns which are very powerful. So they identified those language patterns and then they taught people gestalt therapy during the weekends. So they were fabulous in teaching them, but when the participants wanted to replicate that, they could not. So they got in touch with John Grinder, who is a linguist, and asked him, can you help us put this across in a way that will be better in the results? And John Grinder apparently said, if you, if you want me to teach, you need to teach me how you do it, and I will, you just teach me, and then I will tell you how you're doing it. So that he needed that experience to know how to teach that. So he joined and then later on, only John Grinder and Richard Bandler were together, Pusilic moved out and then they became the father of what neuro-linguistic program is known as today. So these two, they put together two parts of it. They realized that the what Grinder brought, brought to the uh, team was, how do you replicate excellence? And what 
the Chet Bandler predominantly brought was the structure of the experience. So these two people at that point were asked by their mentor, click please, Gregory Bateson, who asked them to go and meet Milton Erickson, who was a hypnotherapist. So Milton Erickson was a quadriplegic, that means he can't move below, behind, below his neck head. Below his neck, he can't move his hands and legs. Very, very weak, was fully affected. And he was a medical psychiatrist who was the only person in the in the in the world of medicine who made who taught hypnosis to doctors. Otherwise, there was no acceptance of hypnosis in the 1960s. So they went and modeled him, modeled him to how he is using language, how you he is using uh, the patterns, etc. And the three of them became. The, the the models who were based on whom the entire NLP was born and then expanded to other strategies, etc. and all that. So this is how they started, the originators started and then NLP was born in the 1960s and then they wrote a book called Structure of Magic Part 1, Part 2, Frogs to Princess, etc. in the 1960s. Next slide. This is what... Um, Virginia said it had to say what Richard Bandler and John Grinder have done is to watch the process of change over time and to distill from its patterns the new process, patterns of the new process, how process, and then what they learned relates particularly in a sophisticated way to mathematics, physics, neurology, and linguistics. This is a quote by Virginia Satie. The next one. They have succeeded in making linguistics into a base for theory and simultaneously into a tool for therapy. Grinder and Bandler have succeeded in making explicit the syntax of how people avoid change and therefore how to assist them in changing. Gregory Bateson. So these are two people who were, whom they are now. Now, uh, before I go to the next slide, I just want you to know the beauty in NLP is how have I understood an experience in my life besides how I allow it to impact me. Some of you may be, have, may be having an experience where you may have had a bad experience and that comes and blocks you from, for example, you go to a group meeting or a party and nobody spoke to you very well. Then you come out saying, I don't think I like to be in people's company. So I'm going to withdraw. So you avoid going to another party or another birthday party of your friend because your earlier experience tells you I don't think I can ever make it. So these are all the kind of limitations we have about ourselves. So how did we arrive at it? I would like you to go to the next slide Abhishek. So if you look at this slide, the word reality is only one thing. There are three filters through which information goes in. The first filter is through our input channel which is the visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, gustatory. Now what is these are the five senses, as I said in the earlier definition, five senses. So when I take information, there is so much of information that our senses are the first filter. Like for example, none of us can see the infrared. It's beyond our capacity. So some of some sounds we cannot hear. The bees and the birds can hear, but we cannot hear. Certain smells, dogs can smell, which we cannot smell. So we have a limitation, so it's like a funnel. And then it comes down to only a few things that we allow inside. And that which we allow goes through the universal human modeling process of generalization, distortion, and deletion. What do they mean? Anything we learn, we generalize. We have one experience, we take it to the whole thing. Yeah, always this person is like that. One person is friendly, we think he's friendly. If he was not friendly one day, we say he's not friendly. Or if I do one thing very well, I say, yeah, I can do it. That's useful. And sometimes generalizations are not useful because we generalize a negative experience as applicable to all the time. Just give me a thumbs up whether I'm going at the right speed because I'm not able to gauge how the group is understanding. Yeah, can you give me a thumbs up to say I'm going fine with speed and my explanation? And I, yeah, okay, I'm getting about three or four. Thank you very much. So now the second part. So what are we thinking? Post. So whatever we take in goes through this human modeling process of generalization I explained to you. The second one is, I don't want a great thing there, Abhishek. 
Why does a grey square come? I think between Karthik uh, and Bharti, they have to be put. If you have the door open between two Zoom uh, login, you will have this effect. So close the door in between the two uh, digital, two, two edges. Yes, ma'am, we're done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now that's okay. This is how all of us learn to use Zoom. That's okay. Second is distortion. See, what, I, what happened was once, it was a couple, young couple. Uh, the wife, one day morning, she got up and she looked at her husband expectantly and he didn't know her what she was looking like that. And then she looked at him, still he didn't know what was. Then he got ready and he went to the office. She was very really crestfallen. Right? And then evening he came and then he said, I'm seeing you very different today. What happened? She said, then she says, you don't love me. This, where is this coming from? What do you mean I don't love you? He said, you don't love me. What did I do? She said, even that I have to tell you, which means you really don't love me. You still have not found out. Then, she's, then he says, no, please, please don't play this. And tell me, tell me what I do. Then she says, what's today's date? Oh, June 18th. Oh, sorry, dear, I forgot it is your birthday today. See, you forgot my birthday, which means you don't love me. Before marriage, you'll wait for the 12 o'clock, wish me, cake, all those things you did. After marriage, you don't even remember my date. Which means the love is gone. So she connects to unconnected things. Loving is one thing, remembering the birthday is another thing, but we connect and we say, ah, you don't love me. We do that with our parents. For example, if you have a brother or a sister and your mom gives something to your brother or sister, you look at it and say, Ma, you gave that with smile to Anna. But you didn't give that to me with that same smile. That means you love Anna and you don't love me. We do all this very often to say that, you know, we have a personal meaning. Which means, we say, which means is our personal meaning, our interpretation to the distortion of truth. And then we have deletion. Right now, for a minute, be silent and notice what sounds can you hear in your, in your room right now. All right. Um, can you type the answer something? I'll open the chat and see. Okay. I'll not. Uh, fan noise. Okay. When I was talking, I'll just take one example. Fan noise. Now, when I'm talking to you and you'll be listening to me, do you even notice a fan noise? After a time, after some time, you don't even notice it because your mind deletes it and focuses on what you want. So that is the second stage. Second filter, as you can see. And the third filter, after whatever we have edited and taken through our senses and then gone through the process, we verbalize it. Words can never uh, express exactly what we are feeling. For example, if I ask you, how does mango taste? Can some, somebody unmute and answer me? Okay, somebody give me a volunteer, you know, unmute and say, okay, I'm willing to talk to you. One of you, I, I'm, a, I'm a nice person. Uh, I don't bite. And I don't uh, lose my temper. So one of you volunteers is boring. Yeah, just to hear my. Yeah, who is this? Mridula, ma'am. Ah, Mridula. What mango do you like? Himam Pasant. You don't know what you're missing if you have not tasted Alfonso. No, I have, but I prefer Himam Pasant to Alfonso. Tell me how exactly Himam Pasant is better than Alfonso. It's much sweeter, I believe. Hmm? Hmm? It's much sweeter than Alfonso, I believe. How do you measure your sweetness? Hmm? I tasted it, so I was able to find out. Exactly how do you taste it? Ex explain that to me. How does it taste in your tongue? Yeah. I tasted Alfonso. I've tasted Himam Pasans. And between the two, I prefer Himam Pasans to Alfonso. If I, ask you, if I ask you, how exactly is Himam Pasans sweet different from Alfonso's sweet? You get take a cut and eat me. No, that, no, that's something that only I know. That that's something exactly. That I feel. Exactly. Thank you, Mridula. The yeah. thing is, the thing is, we don't know to say a few things in words. I don't know. Yeah, that's what it is for me. I can't put this beyond certain limit on words. So words have a limitation. For example, I'm asking you this question. Are you all comfortable? Give me a nod or whatever. Hmm? About what? 
some of you may be comfortable sitting in your house some of you may be comfortable looking at the slides some of you may be comfortable with so many other things exactly what do you mean by comfort or exactly what i was asking we need to explain it no the word can be understood in individual ways so words have a limitation so when we come to express it that final thing becomes our map or model of reality so based on what happened in our life for example i failed in maths let's say i didn't see but i'm just giving an example so in fifth standard i somebody failed in maths so then somebody told him for you maths is one gundam subject it's very tough you know you have to work hard and they put pressure so for that person maths gundam i don't like it i have to work hard i hate it and that maths teacher so maths becomes connected to hatred and that becomes his map or model of reality regarding maths now even if he has then he comes to eighth standard and then there is a different teacher who comes and says hi do you enjoy maths and they all put their head down and one student says i enjoy maths why you all don't enjoy maths in gundam and it is very very hard work then she says what if i teach you a way of enjoying maths and, and doing it easily really we can do that so she changes the map or model by bringing her map and say come on test it like this do it like this then you'll find it easy so and somebody cannot be changing our map so we have opinions about ourselves opinions about people and then that becomes our guide and our guiding factor so i just want to say uh, somebody bought a map of chennai 10 years back and then now in the 10 years back the map was perfect and worked very well if they take that map today and go on the road i don't mean corona time i mean generally go on the road and they see a bridge according to my map no bridge here how this comes this is wrong my map says there is no bridge here this map this bridge is wrong if somebody says you will say he is what would he say outdated outdated so what should one do in order to um at that situation when the map is outdated and the reality has changed what is it that one can do Under upgrade huh? upgrade upgrade or and the changes changes the reality the thing is we all have maps and models of ourselves which we have formed when we were as early as 8 somebody tells a child you are a lovely child you know i am a lovely child somebody tells a boy you are a naughty boy i am a naughty boy i don't like you like this my mother doesn't like me the, the child generalizes she says i don't like you like this and he takes it like my mom doesn't like me and how many people end up feeling even now some of you will feel your parent loves your sibling more than you if you have a sibling right give me a thumbs up this is a universal problem i don't believe that you are all not ah thank you thank you you are all normal happy, human beings happy single child yeah so people think being a single child is happy because there's no competition there is a catch there also i'm a psychologist and i need to give you this information single children believe the whole world revolves around them single children want things to go the way they want if they don't they create a shindi about it who said i'm a happy single child unmute i heard i heard a cut again huh okay yes ma'am yeah cut again so when you don't get what you want what do you do even now it things don't go your way what do you do yeah obviously the anxiety comes in and uh -huh. trying to find ways to get it exactly exactly you can't give up because everybody has danced around you and in the kandik in the enemo you do you don't question he is raja of the house and all that so when you come out you expect the same thing and you want to be the, the center of whatever and that's not wrong i'm saying we have patterns which we replicate as we go on in life there are helpful patterns and unhelpful patterns in nlp there is nothing that is good or bad there is nothing is that is positive or negative we look at it as helpful or not helpful for example speaking the truth is it helpful or not helpful it depends on the situation ma'am exactly so what was told to us you must speak the truth you know is one of the values satyama pesano poye sala kodadu solrava they will tell you go tell lies amma uncle has come no no don't tell him i'm here that's a lie 
So we teach them that our white lies in their heart situation where it's not helpful to be truthful. So we all have our own version which works for us. And there's nothing wrong as long as it works. So there are helpful things. For example, I had a client who wouldn't speak because she was in a very violent atmosphere. If she opens her mouth, she gets hit. So she kept quiet and she never opened her mouth. So she's doing M check and she still feels she cannot open her mouth. So she's she's speaking. So she was it was protecting her for some days, but when she came out of the house, it is not helpful. So what was helpful in some context may not be helpful. So here are some of the basic things that next please. So we call this the surface structure and what we can see outside, but there is a deep structure, which is the real thing. We can never get to the deep structure unless we question these things. And this is where NLP process helps. We help people to understand their map of the world by understanding their language, understanding where they, helping them to identify where they may have generalized and distorted and deleted, and then so on. Okay, go to the next slide. We started 15 minutes late, Bharti. So is it okay to exceed after 11? Unmute, please. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So there is an interaction between internal and external experience which we produce maps. So all these are the filters. All these are filters, our memories. You ask now, are memories affecting? Yes, memories are affecting. Memories are helpful. If you don't know how to brush your teeth, every morning you have to learn it. So memory is essential. So, but then there are some memories which block us and that can be worked on, not erased, but worked on. Similarly, we have other languages and then meta programs, I think I'm not going to explain now. And then we have um, deletions and distortions, etc. Now go to the next slide. So what are the NLP concepts? One is about qualities of excellent communicators through rapport, clear objectives, open senses and flexibility. How do you develop that as an important quality? Next. Rapport building using different seven ways of doing rapport, but just rapport is how do you deliberately build rapport with somebody? In fact, today we started, I started the meeting with Bharti with a few tough situations which we had to handle and then we, and then we handled it. So, and then we need to rebuild the rapport. Otherwise communication gets blocked. Rapport is very, very important in life. Next is the other in the NLP concept is next. Matching, mirroring, pacing, and leading. These are the steps for rapport building. Eye accessing cues is to understand how the eyes move as a guideline to know where the person is coming from. The next one, we have, as I said, we have five modalities. In the five modalities, we have sub-modalities, the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Kinesthetic is the touch and movement. In those modes, we have sub-modalities and how we can, every experience have a structure which, is, which, is, which has these submodalities and we change the submodalities, it changes the impact of the experience. This is only an introductory talk. I'm not able to give you the experience. I'm only going to give you a glimpse so you'll become curious about it. Next, please. Uh, presuppositions are certain principles that we use. I'll elaborate some of them as I go on. And then next one, meta model, which is the language pattern, which I'm not going to cover today, but there's something called meta model for you to know that there is a concept. Next slide, we'll talk about presuppositions, please. Yeah, the meaning of communication is that response is elicited. I'll just give you a story here. Some of you have, I mean, every one of you have gone to Saravana Bhavan, right? Nod? Yes. yes. And there is one old man's picture there, Prabhananda Varya. He was one of the greatest communicators, storyteller in the last uh, century. Uh, I have heard him as a child and he said he's fascinating because he will tell the same story and the 70 year old will take it in a different way, seven year old will take it in a different way. In between people also take it in their own way. He could keep them all engrossed in the way he was telling stories. So even he's, because he was more of a saint and an ascetic, people used to go and see him prostrate in front of him, give him some fruits and come. So one day there were a lot of oranges. So he called, everybody understand Tamil Bharti here? Give me a nod. Yes, okay. So uh, he told some people who were helping him, So these two went and after five minutes they came, gave him all the tole. So he looked at it and he said, Parayenga. He said, Aya ninga tolu uchu kudungan ketna anga tolu kudutu kudungan. Parayat enna pandnega nanga vichiru kondi tuku bolta. Yo na parayat enna pandnega. Tolu uruchu parayam kudungan ketla. Tolu uruchu kudungan chanana tolu uruchu kudutu 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 kud
So the meaning of communication is in the response it elicits. So when we say we think we are very clear, but the other person can listen. People communicate at two levels. One is conscious, which you know, and unconscious, which you not know. And what is reflected is in your body language, as well as in the words you use. Let's say somebody shows, uh, the parents show a boy, do you like this girl who proposed for marriage? Do you like this girl? And they are looking at his face. And he's looking at the girl's face and then the parents yes. don't see the face. They keep asking, Pritchirka, Pritchirka, Pritchirka. And he says, okay. And okay, Surtala. Immediately they understand it like he's agreed that he's like the girl. Actually, this was one clue. Okay. That means the girl is only okay, not for me. So, you know, they, they miss, and miss the nuances. Unconsciously, he has conveyed through his tone of words and the expression that he didn't like the girl. So, we, we need to watch what people say in totality. There are no failures in communication, only outcomes. The person with the most flexibility will control the system. That is, if you are rigid, then we will we'll not be able to be flexible to change the way we do. What is a grey patch again, Abhishek? You are bringing in the middle, middle. I don't like it. Ask the grey patch to go. Thank you. Then you cannot not communicate. So if you actually look at it, from before birth till we die, we communicate all the time, whether we realize or not. The way we breathe, the way we talk, the way we sleep. Even when we sleep, the dream is running on, which is your unconscious mind talking. Underlying every behavior is a positive intention. So even if somebody is obnoxious, we need to understand there is a positive intention behind it. And it takes a moment to come to that because we are so judgmental. Next one. Meet the other person at their model of the world. That is when you understand this is where that person is coming from, then we are less caustic, less angry, less derogatory, more understanding. The map is not the territory. This we have discussed, which is the map is not the actual ground. And then experience has a structure. And when you change the structure, it changes the way it impacts us. People work perfectly. That is for them. For example, many of you would have said, your parents will say, go get this job done. And just about your leaving, they will say, do it like this, 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 this. Then you will say, ma, you told me, now don't leave it to me, I will do it. They cannot understand that you have your own way of working. They have their own way of working. And that becomes a point of irritation. So, this is where we become very rigid. But we need to understand people work perfectly as long as they get the results, you need to leave it. People are always making the best choice available to them at that time. And people already have all the resources they need. There's a very powerful message. Each of you have all the resources you need in order to achieve what you want in your life. That is one of the presuppositions. It's so powerful. That is what we, uh, we help people elicit and use during the program that we run for basic practitioners, etc. Next slide, please. The processes we use are several. Rewinding helps us to reprogram an old memory which hurts us even today. Next one, changing personal. The anchoring is to make, it's like creating a shortcut, just like in your computer laptop, in the screen, you will have a shortcut to a file inside. This anchoring is something that is used in order to access our resources at any time we want. Next. Changing personal history. For example, we have, see, I wish I had handled it differently. So that you could not, and did not handle something effectively can bother somebody. This can be used to change that. Next. Reparenting. Sometimes people feel that parents didn't do a good job of parenting. They're very angry with them. You've seen that? Yes. And I am Seriya Padikya in Engappa, when they nalla college la podella, blah 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 blah. So so many complaints are there regarding parents. We feel hurt. Even now, it has hurt, impacted you. People can be very silently angry. So this reparenting helps them to change the way they see the way they were parented. Their parents have handled it in a different way, and that helps them to be less angry with them. Next, changing some modalities, which is part of the changing of structure, is used in many processes in order to overcome something that we want to or develop something. For example, I love this subject. I hate this subject. Changing the submodalities of the second set to the first one helps one to develop that liking towards the subject better. Next, just giving one example. There are many. 
uh, circle of excellence is uh, 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 anchoring is a process we use uh, in many ways like making it available the circle of excellence is whenever you have done something in an excellent state make that state available to you whenever you want supposing you are going to write an exam it's good to be writing the exam in the circle of excellence so you do an excellent job of it next switch is to change habits like smoking getting angry etc the usual automatic habits we can change with swish next visual squash right next yeah when we have a dilemma i want to do i don't want to do i want to exercise i want to sleep i want to study i want to watch phone hmm, movies in the phone youtube dilemma both are attractive the visual squash will help to solve i have helped some a student transfer his passion for cricket to use for his study so he was in a dilemma and i helped him and then it became his anxiety became much lesser next godiva chocolate is when you want you have something boring to do godiva is the world's best chocolate so nobody can uh, uh, stop themselves from wanting the godiva chocolate so this, this system is the, the the process is called godiva chocolate chocolate is not given it is like what you're passionate and you're compelled you, you you compulsed compulsion about it you can't stop yourself from doing it that compulsion can be utilized to do something which is a chore or a boring thing that can be transferred yes next quick new behavior generated using eye movements we teach people how to generate a new behavior for, for example A student says, "I never study every day, and that's a habit that I want to develop, but I'm not able to develop. I want to exercise every day. I want to go to the gym every day. I want to go to the new behavior. This can be used as a three minutes process, which is fabulous. Next, new behavior generator, which is the modeling. So you want to become like somebody. Then how do you use NLP? Because NLP, one of the most one of the pillars of NLP is modeling. So that's a long process, which is twenty minutes, thirty minutes process." which is very helpful to model somebody's excellence. This is how you replicate excellence. Next. Reframing is uh, changing the meaning of something to something else, which is much more productive. Something is a limitation. We convert that into something more positive. For example, a husband says, you know, my wife takes a long time to select her sarees. So you can reframe it by saying, oh, so she takes time to decide. Yes. Oh, that is why perhaps she selected you because she has taken time to make sure that her decision is good. Immediately makes a person think less negative about his wife's time taking in decision. Next. Six step reframing is another way of reframing, which is much more organized, you no know, alternatives to a particular behavior which will fulfill the positive intention of that behavior. Every behavior, whether it is a habit or not, every behavior has a positive intention, whether it is even smoking or drinking or anything, even a person has got addiction problem, that's something positive for them. And then this, this kind of system reframing can help them satisfy that through other ways by using the creative part of the mind. Next. I know what I'm saying is something very new for you and you may not understand everything, but I'm just giving you a glimpse of it to know how much of variety of processes are there. Unstoppable confidence is about building inner confidence, unstoppable all the time. Next, past phobia cure. People take for a lot of time to overcome phobia, but it takes seven minutes using this process to overcome a fear. Very beautifully elegant process which uses submodalities it uses um, dissociation, etc. And it's amazing, very fast. Next. This is what I don't like about somebody operating. Next, next, next. Building self-appreciation and love is something all of us require. How do you build self-appreciation and love? There's a process for it. The next one, please. Developing self-confidence and handling criticism. Somebody criticizes. How do you handle that? Handling your own self-criticism. Because... It brings down the confidence otherwise. The last one, one more is there? I'm not sure. Timeline. Yeah, we put our goals in our timeline. The concept of timeline is fascinating. And these are all, each one is a one week uh, program when you take it, but they are all concise. And then in a, in a, in a four day program or six day, the online thing, we teach all these to use in different contexts. So these are the NLP processes. Next slide. 
thank you. So now I'm open to questions. We can stop the play and I can see the people, please. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Ma'am, uh, the last question is, what are the essential skills of an NLP specialist? It is asked by Mr. Dinakaran John. What are the essential skills for an NLP specialist? And then? That's it. Okay. That's it. There is no special skills. You need to learn the process. You need to learn how you use the language and you need to be able to communicate with confidence and you need to know the right process to use for the right, right issue. All of you are not therapists. I know all of you are learning, but there's a whole world that you can use. Like you can use it as a student. You can use it as somebody who's, when you're making presentations. And then um, the skill that you need as an NLP facilitator is thoroughness in the process so that you'll be able to help yourself, help others also. All the process that I've explained can be used on yourself as well as on the other and the basic practitioner. Now I have explained, ask you questions about anything that you want. Please unmute yourself and ask. Ma'am, I have one. Yes. Uh, firstly, thank you for the session. It's very resourceful. A you. student of philosophy. Uh, so, yeah. Based on the routine you were talking about, you should have a flexible timeline, right? What uh, do you, you said in the middle. Flexible timeline? Flexible timeline in the sense. Uh, you have mentioned in the middle uh, something about being flexible in whatever situation okay. you're facing. Okay. So for someone who is maintaining a routine, mm. uh, is flexibility, how will he maintain flexibility for someone who is maintaining a routine? Flex See, how do we, if we are not flexible, we cannot survive. Yeah, that's for sure. If you take now, if you take this situation itself, we are all. I am used to doing face-to-face -face training. Okay, now we had announced in April, and then we have been doing the training for twenty years, and we have a way of doing it, a successful way. And then now suddenly you can't. We had announced, and people had enrolled, and then we have, we could not run the program. So immediately we waited for things to settle. We shifted it May, and made it online. So every, every exercise that we did on in person had to change the way we execute that online. And that flexibility we did not have, we could not have completed the program. So flexibility is about things are not static in life. It is very impermanent. Today we it's don't know. How, so, and if we are not flexible, if I say I am used to this way only and I want it that way, it is not going to happen. Then I get stuck there. Have you read this book called Who Moved My Cheese? Oh, no, not yet, ma'am. It's a very small book. Please read it. It teaches how if you do not move, yeah, I can see Kartikeyan has read it. So when you, when you are not in line with what is the reality now, so when we, when we are, uh, as a child, I got what I wanted and unless I get, I will not cooperate with people if I have that as an attitude. And I go and work in a team, things are not going to happen the way I want all the time. So, Flexibility is very, very important, not only in communication, but in our life because things are not static. We may lose something, we may gain something, but we need to change with the times. That is flexibility. And flexibility is also about, I'll ask you a question. Um, your name is uh, S. Laramie. Shankar. Huh? Shankar. Shekhar. 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 If you don't get what you want as a child, what do many people do? The child will cry. First, the child will say, I want. The father will say, no, it's too costly. No, I want. All my friends have. Father will say, no, I can't afford it. No, you are not, you, you are not a good father. You are not giving me. So, threat. And then, I don't want food. I'm not getting what I want in this house. I don't want food. So, I don't want food. So now he knows because he was flexible, he could get what he wanted. So flexibility is very important, but where do you use it and how do you use it is your intelligence. In certain things, you cannot be flexible, like your values. If some fundamental values don't match, if, the, if you work in a place where they are not ethical, they are doing something which is immoral, and one is not comfortable with that, that doesn't need flexibility. There the flexibility is about leaving the job and searching for another. Does that answer yeah. your question? Yes, 
yes you did thank you and there is one more yeah uh, in the upcoming era we'll be moving to only digital as we are speaking right now mm. so how will we overcome information overload the filter is already there your unconscious mind is so powerful it knows what to take what not to take so listen to your mind enak adu thevai illa today if you just take the forwards are all coming about this is the best for covid that is best for covid somebody says zinc is good vitamin 3 is good there is so learn to edit and then take it in check the authentic source and then take it there will be an information overload now today doctors for example say na google la paathu vandirpele of course yes i know something but like that it may be half information because there is some totality which will be missing which doctor can catch but i need to be informed about it for that google is is very very helpful but if i'm going to say i'm going to challenge what the doctor is saying because of what is in the google that might be the doctor so we need to our unconscious mind will tell you this is a limit take that okay so there will be an overload and that is without whether you realize or not there is an overload you have always been filtering do you drive shekhar do you drive two wheeler no you are muted shashank oh sorry ha ah, two so wheeler ma'am i do drive do you drive so when you drive do you know how much of uh, filtering you do because it's an overload of information and you are very focused on where you want to go whether there's a red signal somebody is coming to the left those things you are filtering and taking what is essential for you to drive safely so the process is already there only now you are aware of it that's all okay thank you yeah sure next question one or two more questions two more questions if anyone wa- wants to ask um, hello ma'am i am vaishnavi yes vaishnavi uh so you have mentioned that uh, communication is an, a very important part of nlp and at a time like this uh, communication is very difficult and it uh, affects a lot of relationships do i so, not understand communication is very difficult at this time yeah because uh, we're not able to communicate exactly what we are thinking to others and i think it causes problems okay because we ourselves are facing a lot of problems at this time okay so what exactly can be the steps to ensure relationships like uh, it can be it can be all relationships in any relationship any time when you are interacting with somebody in that context there is an objective yeah you go home tired i'm not you know, i'm talking about pre corona days okay you go home tired and you have had a long day and you are later than your usual and you go home as a girl when you go home the first question mother will ask is why why you like this what happened you late why are you why are you late that's the first question they know you are okay and they'll ask you first question pasikirada na kekka mata why are you late that's for sure and they nay ye apdi kekkra na na chumma late nijama late a vandhen ye da 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 the mother says okay no have a cup of coffee i don't want your coffee ye vechuko for whom have made the coffee ya the mother says i know you are you are not uh, you are accusing me of being late you are not understanding what it is to be outside there waiting for the bus blah 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 so a sada dialogue becomes a conflict and then the whole you shut the door and then she says these days girls are becoming oh no na kalyanam ni pano you open the door and say na kevani kalyanam ni kevenda and shut the door so a small question and a small misunderstanding happens so this pattern of inability to communicate is there throughout corona has only added one feature to it okay so in any situation what do right now what do i want from you and between the two of us is understand so how is how can i explain with an example so that you understand so any moment anybody you are talking to what is the moment what is the objective right now and then speak from that then you will choose your words carefully i want my mother to understand that it is not easy to come in the evening traffic she understands perhaps she is scared she was scared and that is why she is asking so instead of reacting at that moment if you look at her and you say were you worried ma the whole evening becomes so pleasant 
ஐயோ எனக்கு என்னெல்லாமோ சொன்னா எனக்கு வேம் ஆயிடுச்சு அம்மா நான் அப்படிலாம் பயப்படாது இங்க அம்மா நான் அதாவது அப்படிதான் டிஃபிகல்ட் இருந்தா ஐ கால் யூ அண்ட் டெல் யூ யூ நோ தட் ஸோ த ஹோல் ஈவினிங் பிகாஸ் பரவாயில்ல பரவாயில்ல யூ ஆர் இயர் நோ யூ ஹாவ் தி சூட தோசை வாத்து போடுறேன் யூ ஹாவ் தன் ஈவினிங் பிகம் சூ பிளசன்ட் சிமிலர்லி பிட்வீன் ஹஸ்பண்ட் அண்ட் ஒய்ஃப் இட் பிகம்ஸ் அ ரொமான்டிக் ஸோ வி லூஸ் மோமெண்ட்ஸ் பிகாஸ் யூ ஆர் நாட் ஏபிள் டு கம்யூனிகேட் எக்ஸாக்ட்லி வாட் யூ நாட் கம்யூனிகேட் அட் த டைம் அண்ட் வி பிகம் அவேர் ஐ நீட் டு பி இன் சார்ஜ் ஆஃப் வாட் வேர்ட்ஸ் ஐ சூஸ் த டோன் ஆஃப் வாய்ஸ் இட் ஐ சூல் எக்ஸ்பிரஷன் இட் விச் ஐ சே இட் எவ்ரி திங் சேஞ்ச் மோமெண்ட் டு மோமெண்ட் கம்யூனிகேஷன் கேன் சேஞ்ச் ஸோ வித் திஸ் மோமெண்ட் ஹவு டு ஐ கம்யூனிகேட் that is flexibility and that is actually the most important skill important thing is to have rapport in the end of it ma'am in very close relationship you know so we I are think, i think uh, i should we want to say something no i said thank you thank you oh, okay. okay yes uh, bargain i mean yes karti no ma'am in close relationship the damage is done more like we know how the other person reacts and before that we start to react to that uh, you know we know uh, this is what that person will say and then we start to rea- uh, you know to protect us uh, we uh, take uh, self de- uh, defense mechanisms and we start to say something and that's how it goes how to how to control that man you are aware the ones with the close you people you are aware no see in close relationships we can't run away if it is an office you can you can quit the job and go if it is in a shop you can say but i don't want your tuni or i don't want your stuff i'm going but in close relationship both of you are trapped you can't escape so what you can do is be aware the person who is aware and flexible remember will control the system so um i mean i'll give an example before somebody asks if you're defensive you are you are programming them to fire you and theri ninga enna solla varinga nu puri theriyum so instead of now you know that you are you are you are doing saying it before so what you can do is stop and then bring your awareness and say you are about to say something why did you do this yeah okay would like to know the reason yes okay this is now number 1 number 2 number 3 instead of becoming defensive you give information be calm then you can package your idea in a way i know you are concerned and then that changes the way when we look at it from the other person's point of view we are different in the way we package our ideas in order to convince them come to the you thank you discussed we did before we started the session uh, bar yes sir uh, it took me a moment to come out of it because i want to know what are the alternatives right now because i have never seen the person who is helping me that is not also not comfortable no poor guy you were here to listen to my entire lecture maybe he thought he is going to do admin job now i made him listen to my entire talk because he has to listen next 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 <laughs> i hope he enjoyed it ma'am he would have actually i was telling him that it's very useful for you also you should have. what does he do abhishek can you speak ma'am abhishek is uh, finishes job and jee okay I'm preparing for jee ma'am okay okay yeah any other question at this moment so ma'am this is card again so uh, just one uh, suggestion or assistance from you a uh, lot of our employees who work from home started feeling the stress of extended work because of connectivity some people start very early at 5 o'clock and between obviously uh, other uh, I, mean, uh, i mean commitments inside the family to get connected so uh, neither they can concentrate on work on a full good scale of time or neither they can concentrate with the family and uh, in an office they would typically would typically work in a dual monitor with all keyboard mouse and in right now work from home sudden work from home it was not a typical planned one because of this long so people with work with laptop who do production work and a lot of entry work so they go through a lot of stress and uh, you no know, we while we talk to them there is a kind of uh, you know irritation from them on the staffs and you know, they are losing their temper and the, the reality world is they are blessed to have something to do work rather uh, the other side of the society is not having, having enough work to do so how do we help them to understand the real picture and also make them understand this is a, like a passing cloud how do we, how do we get help them out with this man uh, i need some okay. suggestion from you somebody was said a forward saying work from home doesn't mean work at home so now we are at home you are expected to help people at home that's one one other thing that has evolved out of it so 
one has to decide what are my tasks have a have a talk in the family as to how much of time he or she is available or not available and have, I, I would say you know, have a communication system so you tell people from this time to this time I'm in a meeting, no disturbance. So people need to share resources like Wi-Fi time, laptop. Everybody suddenly cannot have four laptops in the house. It's impossible. So how does it work? So when you when you are able to talk to, if you are a boss and you have two, three people reporting to you, talk to each of them about what is their family situation. Help them resolve it. And then, you know, People will say, Chah, jolly a bit lately, well, upon a month or degree, but jolly a bit lately, pandilla, tension or the pandro. And in India, there's a very unique thing which is that organizations do not recognize personal time. See, this is evening is your personal time is something that is not recognized at all. Well, I went, you have to work whenever I'm asking you to work is the culture. So, you are also a victim of that. Your team is also a victim of that. So, let's put a head together. So, we make we don't have to, somebody was telling, tell, telling me yesterday, one of my friends, he said, her uh, son-in-law is a doctor. So he takes telemedicine. So her, his wife tells the mother, <laughs> meaning like all of you are sitting there, we are all very clear about how we look. Even in the way we dress, how do we drink water? Do we eat when we work? All these things are something that comfort we can have at home, which you cannot have in the office. So when you are when you are working from home, there are perks and there are problems. So the challenge is now you and I don't have a choice about going face to face, whether this meeting or work. So you ask him, make him part of the solution. It is not your responsibility to solve his household problems. So when you when you go with the approach of okay, what is the problem? You have listened to his problem, so you will get his map. So he says, I have this, 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 this. If I'm at home, if I'm not at home, I'm not involved. But right now, my family gets wants me to have input. So it is three party agreement: he and his work, you and him, and he and his family. So then have now that this is going to be there for next two months. It's not going to be over by Jan 30th. I don't June 30th. I don't think it's going to get over. The way we are all so indisciplined. Today morning was that Pioneer's uh, um, fu funeral. Okay. Right. That uh, army person, that martyr's funeral. Right. You should see the crowd there. What happened to number of people in a funeral? Okay, he's a national hero. What happened to social distancing? All of them had masks. That was the only savior. But everybody was within touching distance with each other. And it's being telecast. That's a country we have. So they will say, the social distancing, you'll all come. You can't stop the whole village being there. You can't stop the police personnel being there. So in our country, we do not have rules. We have a very, very clear process, which is break every rule. And be comfortable about it. We are not guilty about it. That's the culture we come from. So when we are having rules and uh, processes, Set your own set of, I wouldn't say the word rules, set, set your own set of processes. You say, I will send this message. How long will you take to respond to it? Blah, blah, blah. So within the three team, have an understanding. So nobody is, is pushing anybody's territory and then express to them your inability if there are any of these things. Then come to an understanding. Then that will make work at home a joy. So we don't have to catch a bus. We don't have to go through the traffic, the pollution, etc. We don't have to pack lunch and eat it in the afternoon. Thanks, madam. Just one other extended question of the same topic. A uh, few of the staffs, uh, we, uh, we, are, we are to pay partial salary, few no salary. We are based on the workload. It's not even 100% salary. So now those people, the frustration is even more. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're not able to quit. They're not able to quit the job because they don't find it anything outside handy, or they, they have to travel or commute to find a job. So okay. sticking so with this job huge. does not even pay them enough. Yeah. So that is another set of uh, people or staffs who are going undergoing a different pain altogether. Uh, so it's very difficult even to talk to them when we call them and ask them. And small work is there. Are you ready? What is it that we can show compassion? Yes. You are not the person deciding that he should get less salary. Because right. you yourself may be get less, getting less salary. He may not know how much. 
and you may not even be sharing that you are also getting lesser salary. He may be thinking you are getting a full salary and you are uh, asking him to do. Openness to some extent is helpful. Compassion definitely helps. So you can see, I understand this is tough for time. We, we need to outlast it. In the Nelatla Nibele, Vele, Matiko, Mudiadi, every I will I tell people work harder than you are before because you will lose your job otherwise. But if there are 10 people and out of that, five of them are working very hard to ensure things are delivered or things are done, and five of them are using excuses, they will retain this five and get those five people's job done by these five people. That is the way the companies are going to run from now. They are not even going to pay salary. They'll say, okay, we can't pay now this month. Everywhere this is the whole world is going through this. It's not you and I or someone alone. So as a, as a human being, when you say, I understand this is a very tough time. However, we have a job to do. I will help you in any way that I can. So build a rapport with that person. So he knows you're genuine and you are definitely understanding his predicament, his fear, his anxiety, his disappointment. And then help in whatever way you can. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Most welcome. Thank you, Bharti, for the opportunity. Ma'am, I'm. we are so thankful for you to accept this and give us uh, so much wisdom on NLP. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. You're most welcome. And I enjoyed sharing because I think I have made enough people curious. Our next uh, batch of online training is happening in July. July. Three weekends. We are, we are doing it on three weekends. So people don't have to use their working time because I understand even for working people, 6.30 is not a cutoff time. They, they work even longer than that. So we are not involving any weekdays. Only weekends we are involving. This is our way of being flexible to teach, continue teaching NLP through online. We just finished one batch of... Uh, basic as well as master practitioner because there are three levels in NLP. We just finished the batch last weekend. We are going to have one more in July, the basic practitioner. So uh, if, if you can share with me all their uh, telephone numbers, then I will. Uh, yes, definitely, ma'am. Ma'am, I'll share it uh, with you. Just for them to know the whole world of NLP. Whenever yes. it suits them, whenever they want, they can learn. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. Thank you all. I enjoyed Thank the you. morning. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am.